Here we go. It finally worked. Okay, I finally got on. <laughs> yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Welcome, everybody, to the Reject Rundown Podcast. It's me, Tony the Kid, and this episode is Rejects in the Booth, Wrestling Edition number four. Man, got some good stuff to talk about. Well, I got my old man, RJ, on the line. Old man, RJ, say what's up to the peeps. Hello, Reject. It's me. It's your old man, RJ. <laughs> that sounded bad. Let me reintroduce myself a new way because that sounded like I was taking SG three's introduction. Hey, right, buddy, go. it's me. Silly. Okay, now got some crazy stuff to discuss with you, old man. We got some crazy news that happened last week. First things first, I want to get your opinion on this Undertaker going into the Hall of Fame, my man. It's exciting. I know everyone is stoked for it. We're going to have a nice little special edition here on the Reject Rundown for sure, of course, with everybody on our podcast. We're going to have a nice little discussion about further in depth on his career, highlights and stuff like that. But give it to your opinion. How do you feel about him finally going into the Hall of Fame? I like that they waited for Texas. If you look at like the wrestlers who got into the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. a lot of them, they've given them their... Uh, uh, like, how do you say, like, a really good special edition Hall of Fame where, like, Austin, when he got inducted, he got inducted in uh, right. Houston. And so, Taker, to get him inducted in uh, Dallas is still, like, a proper way to do it because he's a Texan. But I yeah. like the respect that they're giving him. He deserves it. Uh, highly agree. Highly agree. I mean, it's definitely, for sure, uh, well overdue, let's be honest. Um, and in this case scenario with this guy going to the Hall of Fame, it's just, I have a gut feeling, and like we discussed before, that Vince McMahon is going to go all out. Um, he's going to go ham out with his this induction. He's going to have a lot of special events, maybe the whole two-day two, two day event thing with WrestleMania, like it's been going on the last couple of years um, since COVID. I feel like he's going to have a couple of nice special editions, and I don't know, man. I'm actually kind of wondering to see what's going to come about, but it's actually pretty exciting. It's really exciting to kind of know that something's going to transpire with all this, and I'm waiting to see what happens because you're going to get the version of American Badass. You're probably going to get the emer- – the, uh, definitely for sure the the Cradle from the Grave type of Undertaker, um, and then uh, we're going to get the new edition Undertaker. You know what I mean? The double uh, where you combine both of them before you left. Right, exactly. The one that he fought against AJ Styles. So we're going to get that too as well. I mean, did you see that he appeared recently at a Bad Bunny concert? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. No? Yeah. Hmm. He did a, a special appearance at Bad Bunny concert. They played the American Madness version for him. Um, I think they did like a quick song towards it. And then he comes right now, pounding his chest like he did at the entrance, and then just rides off in his motorcycle down the little ramp. Yeah, yeah, I that's pretty cool. Is a big, uh, wrestling fan, so that's pretty really cool. Right, exactly. Huge wrestling fan, so it's exciting to see. But I mean, can't, uh, it's just I don't know. It's gonna be very cool. I'm waiting to see the promo video because I, I love when when they uh, WWE does their little promo videos. And they kind of hype up the wrestler itself. And it's freaking pretty dope. Who do you think is going to induct him? You think it's going to be Kane, McFoley? Who do you see uh, putting his putting two cents up in there? I wouldn't be surprised if they get Bad Bunny. You know, that taker. Because when uh, Bruno Sammartino went to the Hall of Fame, they got Arnold Schwarzenegger because of how close friends they were. Um, when Hogan went in, they got Sylvester Stallone. You know, they got like major Hollywood stars for those guys. But. Corona and Hogan were pretty much her major celebrities. Austin, I think, was inducted by Vince McMahon, so um, there's a possibility it might be seen because of the fact that they were like the brothers of Preston and fans um, want King to be it. But, you know, Mick Foley also, he's like another guy who had great history with The Undertaker, so uh, I wonder if they get to choose who they want or they they choose it for them. That's interesting, interesting actually, to be honest. I would agree to that. It's very interesting to see who how that transpires. Do they actually pick the guy or do you know, WD picks the gentleman that to get to introduct it. I think 
out of respect and the history of everything, you would definitely have to say that they would pick Kane. You know, I think that that's just more or less of the connection they had over the years because technically, let's be honest, the one main person we would say for sure that would definitely induct him would have been Paul Bear, right? But since, uh, you know, the late, great Paul Bear himself, rest in peace, is no longer in the picture, then you would have to now put about Kane, the next second person there. And then after Kane, um, then you would put Mick Foley. Then after Foley, you could probably put Shawn Michaels. Then after Shawn Michaels, probably, you could probably put after Triple Foley, I probably After Foley, after Kane, I'll probably get Bret Hart because Taker, out of all the wrestlers he's ever worked with, he uh, admired Hart a lot. True. Oh, even um, even the Godfather. They're really close. They're like brothers. If I if I if I know in their personal lives, they're really the second closest wrestlers about and be behind the curtain. Not necessarily, you know, they work of course with each other in front, you know, in front of the cameras and stuff like that, entertainment wise. But behind the camera, these guys were, you know, like basically brothers in a sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were. They were very close. I've seen uh, a lot of, like, when they go out and hang out and stuff, and they actually take steam rides together and stuff like that. So right. They, uh, they're part of that Bone Street crew. I forget the name of their crew that they got, but they're part of that crew that Taker created way back in the day. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. It's very interesting that where they're going to play it out. Now, here's the thing. Because it is an Undertaker, will he have different, you know, people discussing about it? Kind of like, you know how they do the roast you know, of you know, celebrities or whatever case would be, and they have different celebrities jump aboard and could chime in. Will they do this more of uh, you know, different people talking about Undertaker before he finally gets inducted? You know what I mean? Like before he finally comes out. Will they give Shawn Michaels some time to talk? Will they give Godfather some time to talk behind the scenes? Kane, you know, who else there would be? His wife, Michelle is it McCole? Is her name? Yeah, it's Michelle McCole. Michelle McCool, you know, who you know, who else can they get? I would say you could definitely get a few of them. And just like I said, do a few chit chats and then finally have Michelle McCool probably do the whole, you know, here's my husband, the Undertaker, you know, boom, boom, and then who come out. I think they could also do um, video packages if they want to, like, you know, speed up time and everything and just focus on one person. Right. A video package would be good because they're like small, short interviews. And yeah, you get like too. certain small things based on like what wrestler said, and there you can feature anyone you want, even The Rock. Mm, oh, that too, yeah. Because Rock is all the way up in Hollywood at the moment. I don't think he'll be around for WrestleMania at all. Um, no, I don't think he can make an appearance at this time right now because I think he's still somewhat filming for Black Adam. So it's at this point right now a risky situation for him to even step foot in there. But, you know, if he were to do something like the video, like you said, the video homage or something like that to The Undertaker, I think that would be more suffice and easier for him on his schedule to do so. Um, but it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Will they even have Bret Hart on there? Will they have, you know, him chime in a little bit, say a few cents and whatnot? That will be interesting. Same, same question with, like, uh, HPK and Austin, you know, like, who do you think would show up? That's the thing. It's like so many names that just they perform with and so many people who respect them. Right. So I, I'll look to see who uh, who gets who shows up and who Taker mentions in his speech. That's, yeah. That's uh, one big important thing because Taker is old school. So, you know, he's going to – he has a lot of names up on his, uh, on his speech coming up. Yeah. There you go. Let's mm-hmm. talk. No, yeah, I would agree. But I also, I think, I guess you could say that he would definitely kind of shout out to Shawn Michaels. You know, the last old dogs of the crew and stuff like that. He would definitely want to limelight on that and say, you know, the, my last, what, major wrestling matches, of course, and for matches of the years back to back was with Shawn Michaels type of thing like that and kind of give thanks and stuff. You know what I mean? of appreciation and even at that during the attitude era i think he could kindly put out there with the attitude era and give his thanks to you know the crew that were in the back and 
all those gentlemen that were back there giving all their hearts, like Stone Cold, The Rock, and, you know, not being afraid to kind of let them shine the light, let them be the two leading factors and let The Undertaker be in the midst of everything and be the powerhouse of the company, you know? True. So yeah. that'll be it, that'll be good. It's going to be very, very good to kind of see what's going to transpire in the speech and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to this. I normally, you know, there are very few um, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame things, things, ceremonies like this that I look forward to. And this is one of them for sure. And me too. I've, I've seen, like, I've watched some of the ones, like, when they were very important to me, I'd sit there and watch, uh, wait for the main person, you know, like, when Brad Hart got inducted, same thing with Austin, Shawn Michaels, I, like, I sat there for those guys. Uh, there's a few inductions, I just didn't sit for the whole show, and some of them I was, like, fast forward just to hear the ones that I know and acknowledge, you know, like, as uh, me being a fan of theirs. Right, right. So it's gonna be gonna be well, well documented, well documented, and we're definitely gonna get excited for. It. So we're also here at the Region Run the Podcast. You guys, like I said, we're gonna do our own little spiel, our own little episode because we got there's. A, I think for us rejects, the whole crew has to also too as well give you know their opinions and their highlight matches that they've seen with the Undertaker, and because there's been so many, and he's done a a, a lot for this company and he's pretty much big a big top name ever since he stepped foot in that wrestling ring so it's going to be interesting to see what the other guys say yeah me too I, I would like to see what they uh, who like what Alex would pick or earn a uh, dream money in his case uh, Zach Mack and all like who would SEC right. pick too like what matches would he consider to be at least his top two or three if he had some um, yeah. I like to bring Ooh. G Money onto this show because G Money is a big Undertaker fan. So, you know, he has a lot to talk about. Right. Right. Agreed. Well, we'll, should, we'll see. We'll see if all goes well. Get everything on there. Definitely want to put that on the board for show. So, it, do you know of who else is being inducted? Oh, man, RJ, do you know anybody else that's being on there? Cause I, if I'm not mistaken, he's the only one that I've heard. See, he's the first one. Um, so, okay. what they just did is they, uh, which is different, actually. Yeah, actually, this has been the same thing every year. A uh, mm-hmm. is going to be your headline. So they always show the headliner first, and definitely you start getting everybody else. So gotcha. in my, except for when well, last year, that's what we were talking about. Last year, I think the headline was Kane, and I think they uh, showed Molly Holly first. Gotcha. So, now, question. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew this or not, but on one of the commercials, on the the one of the new two, the W two K twenty two game that's coming out, on the commercial there is uh, China being put on that game. She had a little, she had a quick glimpse, like a quick glimpse in the commercial, and she's shooting her cannon in front of the fans, right? Yeah. Now, could this be the year that? They actually induct her on her solo ness. I would hope so. I think they're finally starting to uh, open up more to toward her. I mean, they opened up to her being with the DX, so hopefully that's not the case. Where they just they settle with DX and that's it. Hopefully they they um, finally bring her into being inducted into the Hall of Fame as solo career, uh, wrestler because she had a pretty good solid career as a solo artist. Mm-hmm. But I mean, only... she, she was the first woman, if I'm not mistaken, to wrestle with the men. One, she's the only woman I think at this point right now that won the Intercontinental title. Yeah, she is. She she's the only one that beat Jeff Chair for it, and uh, she had a good program with Jericho, and they both won the belt later on together as a team. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And they uh, shared the title um, defense together and stuff like that. So she she was a pioneer for women's wrestling, like. She, if anyone deserves to say they put women's wrestling on the map, it was China herself. At least, at least in the sense of bringing back the physicalness. You know, I think back then in the in the eighties and in the not seventies and stuff like that, we can agree that there were like Fabulous Moolah and stuff like that for them to be in the wrestling ring and to actually be wrestlers. 
you know? And then all of a mm-hmm. sudden, there was that time period where they were more seen as just just the show, you know, just for the model, just for their face, just for their looks. And then here comes China again at a little bit right after that little, the little span and kind of show out and say, you know what, we can still be physical and stuff like that, but still look dynamic, you know. And I think when she brought herself back on there, again, brought the instinct of, you know, wrist, women can also look good, but also put their put their boots, you know, strap on the boots and get in the ring and, you know, put some ridges on some back of people's asses. Just saying. Just, just me saying. <laughs> yeah, because before China, well, the girls that were in the title picture were Jacqueline and Sable and Luna. They had right. some good, you know, you had a decent amount of girls, but like after China, then you started getting girls like uh, Trish was a model when she came in. So Trish right. went from being a model to actually crafting herself to be where she's at now, you know, a legendary uh, woman that looks that's looked up to in the women's uh, division. Like, right. A lot of girls want to be her. Then, of course, you had Ivory, you had uh, Victoria, um, you know, just even the ones before the next generation. You had Victoria, you had Molly Holly, you had Lita. So you had, you know, after China, it kind of spawned into what women's revolution was becoming. Mm-hmm. And then you had... Uh, and after that, well, then you had Lita, who became another, like, inspiration for a lot of girls. But, right. suppose, like I said before, without China, you wouldn't have these, um, we wouldn't be right where we're at. I mean, sadly, I wish that, um, that, uh, WrestleMania is, like, trophy thing. You know, they had the Andre Giant, um, Battle Royale. Mm-hmm. I wish that the one woman's one would have been called the, uh, you know, nice wonder of the world, uh, better royal, like the China Rumble or something. It would be nice. I think, like I said, I think at this point right now, to it would be hard for WWE to kind of put her name so much close to a lot of things. And I think they had a good, they had a good, I mean, they had a, a good understanding or at least to us fans on the reason why behind everything, why it's taking so long for her to, you know, put her name out there like that. Her name, obviously, after the whole wrestling career, done some, you know, does some different acts and stuff like that, or, you know, whatever path led to. And it's, and for something like that to be attached to a company that's trying to be, that we know that's a kid-friendly company, it's very difficult to kind of, put names of, of her caliber towards that. So you understand why, but I guess between you and I and the inner fans and us, it's like, okay, well, you know, just come on, man, just put it out there. It's, it is what it is. It's not like these commercials are any better that we see nowadays. These commercials are more, pro, you know, graphic than we, it was when we were kids. So it's like, there's, there's a fine line that I think, one people are trying not to cross, but in the essence, they're not seeing that line. Actually, seeing the fact that they are crossing that line, so it's very difficult to kind of. I don't know. It's going to be very hard, but I agree with you too, old man, and kind of putting her name to that because, regardless, at the end of the day, for her name in wrestling industry needs to be put out there and be shined out. It needs to be highlighted. It needs to be, you know, represented, and it needs to be. Um, you know, respected in this case scenario, just because of what she did, especially during that attitude era, and and a little bit even after the attitude era kind of passed on to the ruthless aggression. She was still present during that time frame, and still, you know, put on the boots and getting in the ring and wrestling with Eddie Guerrero, the lights of Eddie Guerrero, the lights of Jericho, the lights of you know who else. She even I think she'd get a little little one hit wonder with uh, against uh, Big Show at one point. So it's like. You know, things like that and that nature, it's like, you know, you have to kind of put it out there to respect. You have to. There's no reason why we cannot express that. So, going to be interesting. Very interesting. I'd like to see that. Who else do you think will be posted up on the Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer this year, 2022? Any other names that cross your mind that there's a possibility? Yeah, have been in there? Damn. Yeah. I think we already targeted everybody that never done it. Yes, yeah, true. Tag team wise, there's no the Steiner brothers. Remember that? We were talking about that too. 
that'd be I would love for the Santa Claus to go in. So that'd be a good technique to go in with uh, Undertaker. Another technique to go in would be APA. No, oh, oh, that's right. Even the APA can jump on there. You're right about that. And Bra- Bradshaw would be what a a two time a two time so Hall of Famer. Simmons. Yeah, both Ron and Bradshaw. That'd be that's like true. a two time for both of them. Or even then, you could even put Legion of Doom. Not Legion of Doom. Uh, Nation of Domination. You know, I'll think about that too because, but you would need to get permission to bring Mark Henry in. Say that one more time. You need to bring Mark Henry in? Yeah, because Mark Henry is an AEW, so they'll probably need permission for him. Got you. And another guy that's out there is Bilo Brown. I think those are the only two you would like have to talk to get them in. But they can pull it off. I mean, come on. Nation of Domination is another big faction that's out there that deserves to go into the Hall of Fame. Um, who else? Uh, Christian Cage. I think mm-hmm. Christian deserves a, a battle in the Hall of Fame. I don't think Jericho will go in. I think Jericho, if he goes in, it has to be a like a headliner. Right. Right. I agree. But He's for a... one division, I think if not China, I would go with Michelle McCool. With his wife, too, as well. I wouldn't put her just yet. I, I think she would still need to I would give her a couple more years because she's looking pretty decent in the wrestling in the Royal Rumble ring when she gets in there with the other girls. So I would probably give her one more year in for next year to be in the Rumble, but then also probably by next year induct her for sure. Because I think I think that's where it's that lining of am I going to be in there or not? I mean, we already know Goldberg's already Goldberg's in the in the Hall of Famer at this point right now, right? Yeah, he was inducted, I think, at uh, WrestleMania 35, if I'm correct. Okay, and this guy's still wrestling, which is crazy. Um, yeah, that could be it. could be said about Lita. <laughs> that too, that too. She came, she put a heck of a show. She put a good show on there, man. Did you see the, you saw the Elimination Chamber? I only saw the match I wanted to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put it on today. I was watching. It's crazy. I don't. I never watch in Spanish, but today because for some other reason on Peacock, we only got Spanish to be able to watch. So I put on Peacock. I put it. Put freaking Luminous Chamber on, and I'm watching in Spanish, and I'm hearing all these guys. What you mean? Like you know, it's pretty. <laughs> it's funny, uh, but it was a good match. Um, on Peacock, I think you check the settings and change it to English. Hmm. It's just because it's what's available. They don't have the English version available. They, they only have the uh, um, Espanol for replay. So I'm assuming that Elimination Chamber is going to rerun again, and then you would have to watch it at that point, like live schedule, and then in order to watch it. They're, they don't have the replay ready just yet for it. So oh, whatever. Yeah, I actually it's I all watched good. it yesterday. I actually watched it last night. That's why I was like, you might, you know, because it's odd. Oh, and I watched it last night in English. Yeah, you might have watched the live schedule. That's the thing. Yeah, so, you might be right. Maybe. Might have gotten the English replay. Yeah. But it was good. I mean, it was a good elimination chamber. I, I It was pretty nice. So, yeah, I think we have to wait and see what other inductees. It's pretty excited to kind of see what the schedule is going to come about. So I'm assuming with the next couple of weeks, they're going to be posting out, you know, here's the next one, here's the next one. Normally they give about six six. Um, inductees, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, and I'm going to give out six, I think. Um, and this year, I would like to see who they pull, because I, I can't think of anyone that's missing. I mean, there we got Jeff Jordan in there. They got, uh, there we got Dusty Rose. They got, got so many names that have been pulled in there. Um, probably Dusty Rose is, I don't know, Sherry Montel. I don't know if Sensational Sherry's been in it. I don't know. A demolition hasn't been in it yet. I think they're trying to get a good relationship also with WWE. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, we have to wait and see and see how it fires out to be. It's going to be interesting when it comes about when the next, um, what's it called? Next inductees is going to be naming big names coming out. So we'll take a look and see. Maybe they'll probably drop a celebrity this year too as well. Johnny Knoxville. Well, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, other news on that. Elimination Chamber, besides that, on that, my man, I want to get your thoughts on that, too, as well. Did you think, because if I'm not mistaken, I was right, that Brock Lesnar was definitely going to win the championship, or even at that, if I'm mistaken, you thought, too, as well, that he was going to take the title. But did you actually watch that match, and did you actually enjoy it, to, to say? No, the only one I actually watched was the women's one. I, I knew that Brock's uh, Elimination Chamber match was going to be like a one-sided uh, mm-hmm. broadcast of him just destroying everyone, you know, so I didn't want to watch that, and I didn't watch the Goldberg against uh, against uh, Roman, because that didn't appeal to me at all, I felt like you know, that was more of a Roman going over and just proving his dominance too, so I was like, I wanted to watch something I, you know, I knew that was going to lose to Becky Lynch, but I wanted yeah. to see how good Lita still was in the ring, like, she, she was looked sloppy before, but um, from you know, from people who were talking, they were all saying that she was gonna look amazing in the ring. Like she looked amazing. So I, I put that yeah. on. I sat there and watched it, and I was like, "Wow, we actually put on a classic with Becky Lynch." She did. She did put. She put on a really good match. It was. Um, it was actually interesting to say, say the least, because I mean, she really went out there and wrestled with against her, and that everyone enjoyed her work, and which is a good thing, because without without with without that. Without that type of entertainment and still having the legs to get on the, get on there and, you know, pretty much put on an actual good wrestling type of match the way she used to, is test, test testament to how, how grave a wrestler she's been. And it's really, you know, good to the skills. So you could tell she kind of went in the ring. She's been practicing quite a bit. And for her and Becky Lynch to put on a show like that, it was very, really cool to see. You know, Lita's always been one of my favorite female wrestlers, and uh, this type of match, I was actually excited. I was actually glad that it, it did well because, you know, you and I know that when old older wrestlers from the past come on board and they go to you know Arabia and they wrestle there, it doesn't always pan out correctly. You know what I mean? No, not really. I've seen so many old wrestlers come back in. The matches go really bad, especially when you put old wrestler against old wrestler. Like when you did take her against Goldberg, and oh yeah, it, Goldberg tore himself up before the match was even starting. Mm-hmm. Even then, what's it called? Uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels versus the D- basically DX versus the Brother of Destruction. When you had those two going against each other, that was that was a bad one too as well, just because of the fact that you had you know Triple H, if I'm not mistaken, tore his pec. Oh, mm-hmm. jacked that up there. So it's it's not it doesn't always pan out correctly, and I think this is just another. This was good to, for her to go out there and actually have a good show. Was really good. It was really awesome, and I, I was actually excited. That, excited for her, you know. I was excited for the both. It was good. Even at that, you can probably argue and say maybe this could be a WrestleMania rematch type of thing like that in the in the future. But you know, at least right now, this was good for where it was. At least this shows Lita that she could still, like, if she wants to and she, like, works on her craft, she could still mm-hmm. do it. I mean, look at how good she did against Becky Lynch. Uh, and I hate to put it this way, but Becky at the moment is a high caliber performer. Definitely. So for Lita to show that she still can go, that's, you know, I'd love to see if Lita comes back in at least teams with Trish and goes to WrestleMania against uh, probably Sasha and Bailey or. Or probably, uh, you know, you never know. Possibilities are open all over the doors now for them to to do something at WrestleMania. Right. Yeah. Agreed. And then actually, too, I don't know if you saw this on social media, but you know, hopefully, Mad Cat Moss is doing well. But Drew McIntyre literally freaking made him land on his head in that match. They fought against each other. It was the reverse. What was it? belly flop or something like that they were trying to do and freaking Drew McIntyre just slingshot him and literally just made him go head first Madcap Mad Cap Moss went boom him right to the dome on the mat and you see the replay and you can clearly see his head just basically get crushed by his body like everything just goes down now I think you know according to recent news and stuff like that he has he's not suffering any injuries or anything like that which he's doing well which is good but if i was him i would still get reevaluated i would definitely go out there 
soak his body in the ice ice cube, you know, type of thing like that, ice cube tub type of thing for a good while. And even at that, go to go to a chiropractor and make sure everything's lined up before he gets back in that ring. Just saying. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, oh man, RJ, did you see that on social media? Yeah, they posted it. I was like, damn. I was yeah. thought I that or could be a career ending. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's it could it could basically be how with Stone Cold when he got slammed on his head by Owen Hart. You know, it's basically yeah. the same same type of a situation dynamic. It was head first, like going straight down on the canvas. And it just and at that, this guy I feel like is more heavier than Stone Cold was back then. So for all that, like man, ooh, that looks bad. It just looked bad. It looked bad. And I was very shocked to see him still, you know, keep going on throughout the match and be able to kind of last it for as long as it did. It went on for nine minutes. So it's very shocking to see that he still was able to put on a good extra five minutes of show. That's not bad. Not bad at all. I was happy for that. Now what sucks, old man, is that I don't I don't know what it is, but I don't like the no I don't like the fact that um what's it called? Bianca Belair won won that elimination chamber. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, old man. I don't know if you wanted to pick her, but I clearly did not. I don't I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't I don't I don't believe in Bianca right now. I don't think she's ready just yet to be thrusted into these type of WrestleMania events, nor in these type of situations right now. I think she still has a lot of growing to do. She's not there yet. Do you agree or you, you feel like she's okay? I think, in my opinion, uh, it's not about, like, if she was ready or not for this. Is that WWE is trying to do uh, right to a wrong that they did, and that's at SummerSlam, they made her lose to Becky in such short fashion and all that. I don't think fans are happy about that. And that's why WWE decided to give her a WrestleMania match again. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, the one I would have gone with and the one that deserves to be in a world title match at WrestleMania is the girl who's been working her butt off and that's Liv Morgan. Okay. What? You think so too? Man, what? I thought Rhea Ripley would have said, man, she's been busting her butt just as much as Liv Morgan. And at that, if I'm not mistaken, Rhea Ripley's been in here a lot longer than Liv Morgan. Am I right? Or am I wrong? No, you're wrong. Liv has been there way longer than Rhea Ripley. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll give it to you then. Maybe seniority. I'll go with that. Okay. All right, Mr. Senior. You're right. (laughs) (laughs) Forgot about that. You know more about the senior roles than, than myself. So, okay. Okay. I'll take you on that part. So, all right, maybe Liv Morgan. Maybe that. Maybe so then. Okay, I would be okay with that. I think Alexa Bliss would probably have been your like your safety choice in case something were to happen to either or. But you know, Bianca Belair, like I don't know. And that's the thing. I think by her losing last time at SummerSlam, like really quick, was just because you just I felt, and this is just me. Yes, I understand the fans probably were not happy, but I felt that. That's just a testament. That's just the statement to Bianca saying, Bianca, you know, you got to step up. You got to do this, this, and that. If you were in this situation like a, like a, um, Asuka or like a freaking, you know, Becky Lynch or, you know, Charlotte, then we would never have had to kind of put you in that predicament where you would have lost in that fashion. But because something's not, something's missing. That just goes to show. Go back to the drawing board. Let's get you get you more repetitions. Let's get you back on the mic. Let's get you to kind of you know amp up again. I think ever since she won the title, which even then I don't understand why she won the title, but ever since she won the title, it just seemed like it was a dull reign, you know, championship reign. And for them to switch it back over, under made it made it understood that she's just not ready. You know, and I get that they want to, you know, fix right from wrong. But t- again, for her to put back on WrestleMania and to have her expectedly beat Be- uh, Becky Lynch, I don't know. I can't. I don't think that's a good move, and I don't think that that's right. My sense. I don't know. I don't think she will win. I think Becky's gonna keep her belt. Better hope so, man. The reason why I feel like Becky's gonna keep her belt is 
you can't have Becky lose and Ronda won't win and not give meaning to a Ronda Becky rematch at next year's WrestleMania. If Becky loses her belt to Bianca Belair WrestleMania, it's gonna like, and Ronda wins, then it's like, you know, you don't have that championship uh, passion to be champion still. Yeah. So it's gonna make Ronda Rousey look stronger going into this pay per view, and that'll be a dumb idea for them to do that. Right. And, you know, you know, Ronda's not gonna lose to Charlotte. Uh, no, no way. No way, no. no how. I don't. I I really don't think so. That would be very hard for them to kind of put that out there against them like that. So no, I don't think so. I surely hope not. <laughs> I surely hope not. Yeah, me too. Like I don't think it would be a dumb idea to have Ronda lose, you know, lose to Charlotte at WrestleMania. It would be like it would be exactly what you did with Oscar. You know, when Oscar was like undefeated and he let Charlotte beat her. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Very true. So, yeah. yeah, We'll see. We'll see how it goes, though, man. I think, and then, you know, back again to the Brock Lesnar winning the Elimination Chamber match at this point right now. Obviously, that sets it up for the title versus title. Now, is it really title versus title, or would it just be Brock, you know, being a champion going against Roman, you know, for his championship, just because, you know, Brock won the Rumble, so obviously he got dibs to go against you know, Roman for the championship. But because he won this one on Elimination Chamber match, will he kind of, you know, will it be defend versus defend? I think it's defend versus defend. And, dude, honestly, that's one of the... I think at that time, I'm going to turn off the game and probably play a a video game or something when that match is done. (laughs) Uh, I'll read about it on social media. Like, the winner was Brock Lesnar or the winner is Roman Reigns. I'll be like, I don't care. Both of them. I don't even want to see this main event anyway. <laughs> you guys are so mean, man. What's wrong with Brock and Roman, man? They've only wrestled like five times. It's not just that. It's not about Brock and Roman facing each other at WrestleMania on the main event for like the third time. Mm-hmm. The fact is that, dude, a lot of people who are in that company deserve to highlight, you know, the pay per view show to headline it. You have guys like AJ Styles, who I know he had line 36 with Undertaker, but you have AJ Styles, you have uh, you have freaking Seth Rollins, Big E, you know, um, you have um, The Miz, who could still put on a hell of a main event if they wanted to, and he could cut a promo like nobody else in that company. Facts. So the problem is, is that WWE you have the potential of star power. And Brock Lesnar brought that up. You know, he's like, you guys need to step up. And I'm like, well, they can't because Mr. McMahon doesn't let them. Yeah, fans I agree with, I, I agree with that. Fans want to see a change. And that's why, like, if fans want to see a change, why well, I think AEW is kicking WWE's ass. Dude, mm-hmm. and a Wednesday night show is 10 times better than WrestleMania itself. What does that tell you when a show on Wednesday that's just a regular show outclasses your mean, you know, your mean spectacular? Mm -hmm. And the problem is, the reason why a Wednesday night show from AEW is outclassing your show is because AEW knows how to put on uh, good quality matches for the fan base. Yeah. So that's that's my problem. It's it's not that it's Brock and Roman three. It's that it's two guys that we we've seen in the headline. You know, and it's it's time for they to give new fresh faces another shot. Like I wouldn't mind if it would have been Drew against Roman Reigns, or if it would have been Brock and Bobby. You know, they could have stayed through uh, Brock and Bobby for WrestleMania. True, but they're I think, trying to. I think that uh, would be that would have been a lot better and a lot more entertaining let's put that way i think the promo for that one would have been a lot more a lot more of a sell than it would have be against roman versus brock i i I can agree with you on that i think they really lost you know it really was a good setup for them to go against each other at SummerSlam or no at royal rumble um for the championship and it was kind of setting up really good 
but they did kind of mess it up with the whole interference. But then again, I mean, you know, it, it was kind of foreshadowing that they were going to have uh, Roman kind of step his butt up in there and kind of do something stupid to kind of mess it all up. But I also would agree that it's it just a missed opportunity. Th- this is something that they can really hype up with and really go with and get and get things out there. I agree. I mean, that was my problem is when you have a high caliber match that could have been perfect to watch at WrestleMania, yeah. and you put it on the Royal Rumble, I mean, you know, and pretty much said that you didn't want to, either Bobby wasn't going to be okay for me, you which know, we already realized he's not. Right. And two, it means you didn't trust that match to highlight WrestleMania. So you trust a match that you had twice where and I was there for the second time. People walked out on the second pay per view main event. The second time around, when these two fought at WrestleMania, they walked out of the building. A lot of people. Mm-hmm. I noticed that I was there watching them walk away, and I was like, oh, wow, people didn't want to stay and see this. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's the problem. Is Vince McMahon is still trying to make this match uh, feel <laughs> like a momentous thing. Like, he, yeah. he won't give up until fans give this match a standing ovation it's not going to happen no matter how hard he tries he could put Brock and Roman Reigns in shard of shark tank and the winner is whoever feeds you know a virtual shark to these guys and people <laughs> people will still walk out like oh I knew he was going to get fed to the shark let's walk away and it's because honestly people are just sick and tired of the same old thing yep that's true that is true. I agree with you on that. I agree with you, old man. It's the really, it's just really time for things to kind of just be better. You know what I mean? And and be as as good as potential as you can be. You know, I think that's another thing where I, both of us can be really frustrated how things are ending up, just because it has a lot of potential. And the fact that I think in the past we've seen these type of ideas come to fruition and it was awesome to see for sure. But it seems like it just it's not happening no more. And it's like, why not? You know what I mean? Like, why isn't this happening now? But I bet you any money if this was, you know, five years, ago, 10 years ago. You know what I mean? When we were watching it during the Attitude Era, this is something that they would have put out there. Not you know? really, because this was, they wouldn't go for this match a third time. I mean, they did with uh, Rock and Austin, of course, but Rock and Austin, the third one, didn't even close the show. The third one yeah. was, the main event was Rock against Kurt Angle. Right. And, of course, the other third one that didn't close the show, and here's a match that never even main event, and it was a main event caliber match, was Taker against Triple H. Wait, what happened? Here's a match that was main event caliber, but never main event had a single WrestleMania. It's tri- Triple H against The Undertaker. When? That WrestleMania year? Each time that they fought at WrestleMania, it was a WrestleMania main event type of match, but they never they never closed the show. Who was who was supposed to be? Or who was, uh, for sure? Okay, so when Taker and Triple H fought at 17, the main event was Austin against The Rock. Uh, when you fought at 27, that should have been taken Triple H's main event because that year the main event was uh, Miz and John Cena, which set up Cena against The Rock. And then when they fought one more time at 28, of course, the main event was Cena versus The Rock. Gotcha. Okay. So you see, yeah. you, don't, you don't really have to put these massive match uh, you know these massive guys in the main event because that's what you want to see and you know you being the owner of course you want to do your own thing now and walk out like if it's kind of you know you think that this is the last hurrah honestly yeah. your last hurrah would have been Seth Rollins against AJ Styles or Big E versus um Seth Rollins but in my huh? opinion your last hurrah would have been Roman against Drew McIntyre one more time yeah, I really like their matches to the other as well. Drew McIntyre and Roman. And that's the thing. I think if you – here's my thing. I think if you can actually put – if it's a single-singles match, you could definitely put a, a Drew McIntyre-Roman 
That would be very entertaining. A freaking Drew McIntyre and Bobby. That's definitely entertaining. A Drew McIntyre and to be here's my thing. What we haven't seen is a McIntyre versus Brock longevity match. A good maybe 10, 15 minute style of match with each other. Because they kind of got robbed out of the situation when WrestleMania hit for COVID. So we never mm-hmm. really got to see that impactful match. So if you can put that in this midst, that would be something to be in it more, like something intriguing to see more of. So I think I get your point where you kind of have to play in the sense of, okay, yes, Brock is a, you know, he's a namesake. He's still dominant force, case may be, right? And to be honest, my perspective right now, he's actually doing a lot more better than he was before when he came back from UFC. So I feel like he's playing into wrestling with the other wrestlers a little bit more and letting them, you know, kind of get get their little hype up, their name, you know, their energy up a little bit to get the fans brewing into it before he starts being his down himself, of course. But in this case scenario, this would still be good for him to kind of jump in ship with with the likes of Bobby, do more matches with him, with the lights of Drew McIntyre, do a couple more matches with him, with the lights of possibly even Riddle. You know, that's another name that's been attached to him for quite some time now of possible workmanship with each other. Do another Riddle match or do a Riddle match against each other or RKO and then get Riddle mix in there and something like that. You know, it's something to kind of move along and get, you know, move along the norm. We've already seen this. I agree with you. We've seen this match quite often before and they go, you know, here and there. But my... My intake, though, is we never also got an actual full-blown match between, you know, Brock and Roman, you know, for good match-wise. There's always been something to kind of interfere and never been a sense of, like, okay, this is, from start to finish, these were two behemoths going at each other, and this is the actual winner. There's always been some type of coercion or interference on the outside or whatever and to kind of mess things up in that case scenario so that that's that's the thing we'll actually have to see at, uh, 34 they actually did have a full on match against each other all right so let we left off last time discussing Brock Lesnar and possible future matches and who he can kind of you know, wrestle around with at the moment right now, okay? The way things are headed, too. I think last time we discussed uh, Matt Riddle, or not not Matt. Is it Matt Riddle? Is that how you – that's his first name? Matt? Yeah, Matt Riddle. Okay, Matt Riddle. Or uh, who else? Bobby Lashley a few more times. Drew McIntyre, how we how it's underrated. We didn't get a match with him at WrestleMania. And at that Roman, you didn't really get a full-on one-on-one. But I believe you said they have had a full-on one-on-one match before. Yes, uh a few WrestleMania back before at WrestleMania 34, they had a one on one. But by that time, dude, like I said, uh, fans walked out of there. They were like, you know, they were just tired of the bull and the, of the BS, you know, of having to see the same guys. At that time, at 34, he wanted, um, I think, we wanted somebody else in the main event. We were hoping to get, I think, Rollins or somebody up there. And we got uh, Reigns and Brock. For no reason, you know, we, we I would have uh, my suggestion would have been uh, Cena was out there like building up this match against Undertaker, and it had more people hyped than Roman against Brock. And I'm like, what they should have done is kept that match waiting until the last uh, minute, you know, after Brock and Roman they walk out, and suddenly it would have been cool to see Cena like pop out in the ring finally and just call him out one more time and then have Taker face him and close out WrestleMania. People would have left home happy. But That's true. honestly, people walked away like way before the even match even started. I saw people walking out of the arena. If you look at the video and footages that they try to show of that arena, it's mm-hmm. added people because from what I saw, there was hardly anyone at the top bleachers and at the bottom bleachers. So you were there personally, right? Yes, I was there personally because I wanted to watch a uh, scene against Taker and New Orleans. I love New Orleans. So, uh, you know, whenever they have WrestleMania in New Orleans, I'm definitely going to be there no matter what because it's if New Orleans. We all, we all know why. We all know why. Old man RJ walks in with, you know, a neck full of beads and walks away with nothing. 
nothing. Well, not say nothing, but no more beats. Let's put it that way, you guys. And we all know what happens to those beats. Uh <laughs> those food restaurants. I was giving them to the to the cook for food. Like, here, you can right, use right. this. Give me something to right. eat. Man. I'm right. hungry. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for that. I'll take your word for that, big guy. <laughs> oh man, RJ is as clean as what they say a whistle. Yep. Sure. Okay. No problem. No problem. Well, I mean, it's interesting to say to see to see what the future holds for Brock Lesnar. I think we both agree his at this point right now he's looking great. He's looking better than I've seen him as far as his in ring action, what he does on the mic skills, his look, his behavior. You know, everything looks more positive with him. He looks more like he's having fun at this time right now. So it's best. I think right now is a great time to add him in different matches with different people. Let him work with other with other performers, other wrestlers and stuff like that to see what they can create at this time right now. When you have something like that, it's good. And right now I feel like he's willing to, you know, submit in a sense of letting a perform, let a wrestler do what they need to do and botch a few moves or whatever the case may be just to make the other guy look good like Undertaker did him at some points and kind of, you know, give it, you know, give it that perspective of, you know, I'm elite, you know, I am a veteran. I'm coming here. I'm going to help out some of you guys. I'm going to perform, you know, and that's it. I'll do my job and do it well. Let's get it. Let's get a good show. So it helps him with that. I think with him as Brock Lesnar, it's something that he feels res- like he respects that aspect. If Vince gives him a baloney storyline and just feeds him baloney, he's not going to like it. Like we saw backstage views of him throwing the championship, at Vince McMahon because the storyline or the reaction or whatever case it be didn't, you know, he didn't respect that decision. He didn't like it because he knew for a fact yeah, it was that was, uh, that was WrestleMania 34. That was 34, right? Right after they beat Roman Reigns, they walked out like not happy at all because, of course, Brock is not just a wrestler, you know, he's not just some um, big dude that walks in and wrestles and that's it. No, Brock has a businessman mentality. He's not gonna, yep. he knows. You know, I'm, I had to sell tickets. I had to, you know, I had to have the fans, uh, you know, unto me. Yeah. But when you have, you know, when you, he has the same stuff happening, people booing the good guy and people right. booing him at the same time, then you're, you don't have a main event, dude. That's you have true. a sleeper match. That's a right. A lot of people might have used the main event as a bathroom break, sadly. Mm-hmm. That Which is, is what I'm going to do this year when I watch The Miz and... Logan Paul or Jake Paul, whichever Paul or Paul Bunyan, whoever it is. Paul uh, Bunyan. One... <laughs> <laughs> whoever jumps whoever in that ring. <laughs> whoever jumps in that ring, whichever celebrity that is. Yeah, uh, I agree. That's going to be the bathroom break match for me. I'm going to be like, oh, I hold it too long. Let me go because this might, you know, this might be a while. Yeah. And I want to make true. sure I, I uh, you know, release everything before I go back to watch uh, yeah. the good stuff because that's going to be crampy. Sounds good. Okay. Now, moving along over there. So, that's Elimination Chamber, guys. Hopefully, you guys tune into it. Rewatch it if you can. Oh, it was yeah. Decent, you we know, still got to do our chamber thing that I created for us. That's true. Yes, you do. Go ahead. Hmm. So, this year, uh, let me see if I can pull it up without getting kicked out of this one thing right here. So, okay. Here's the idea for this year, Sonya, okay? And you're going to like it. Me and you, we're going to play the chamber match with, um, like, we're going to both take turns eliminating the team until we're down to the last one. Okay. Uh, the ideal is this is going to be a tag team chamber match, and the winner of this face the Legion of Doom for the tag team championship at our Reject Mania pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. So here are, the, here are the six contenders that, you know, that will be in it. The Outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Cool. Harlem Heat, Booker T and Stevie Ray. Cool. The Steiner brothers, Rick Steiner, Scott Steiner. The Dudley cool. boys, Ray and Ray and D, uh, Bubble Ray and Devon Dudley. Nice. APA, you know, uh, John Bradshaw, Leafield, and Farouk, mm-hmm. Ron Simmons, and Demolition. So those. Am I back? You're back now. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Right. Sorry, no, buddy. Okay. Uh, any other connection problems, you know, old man RJ is still working on AOL or whatever it's called. <laughs> I was the last of my kind. <laughs> Silly. Okay, so yes. Okay. So what last one was? 
How far did you get? Did you get uh, APA? Yeah. Okay, the last scene is Demolition, Axe and okay. Smash. Okay, so these are six teams that literally never faced the Legion of Doom at WrestleMania. That's the idea of this match, right? Mm-hmm. So me and you are going to go back and forth eliminating each team until we're down to one. Okay. Wait, so no. I'll let you start. Okay. Yeah. Demolition. Okay, so that's one. <laughs> I'll go with uh, the Dudley Boys. What the hell? Uh, APA. Harlem Heat. So we're down to the last two, which is either the Steiners Steiner. or Outsiders. Uh, so the Outsiders will be... Who do you think? Who do you want to go against? Oh, uh, shoot. I would say... <laughs> oh, dang. Uh, that's a it's a toughie Robert because, yeah, because the Steiner brothers were fantastic in their prime. The outsider, I would say, the outsiders let them go. So you will have the Steiner brothers go against the Legion of Doom at WrestleMania. Yeah, they because the reason why is because I've seen a match with them before, and it was physical. It was physical. It was on point. They were in sync with each other with their moves. It was a really good wrestling match. They had they had they wrestled with them as well as the Hart Foundation, and both of those teams like back and forth with each other. Fantastic back in their prime when they were on point. They were on point. So yes, I would like to see them go against Legion of Doom. And me too, but not just that. I like to have Scott Steiner when he was championship material. Scott Steiner against Legion of Doom. Imagine that version of Scott Steiner against Animal and Hawk. See, I kind of would have oh. to disagree with you on there because I think, no lie, I think Scott Steiner before he won the title was a better wrestler. But because he won the title, he was a better in-ring mic skills. You know what I mean? His mic skills was more on point. So if you can combine the two in a sense and have that, it would have been phenomenal. He would have been great. But I think yeah. wrestling-wise, he was definitely a lot better wrestler back then You know, with his, with his brother and the tag team with the Steiner brothers. Yeah, that's true. I, I agree with the tag team thing. And you know what? We can combine them. Let's combine yeah. Scott Steiner and create uh, New Age Freakzilla. <laughs> New Age Freakzilla. There you go. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, All that's right. nice. So now, here's the other one before we continue our show. Uh-huh. The second one is a women's chamber match. We already have one women's title on the line at Mania, me, you, and SG3. Yeah. Here's the other one. The winners of this match will face off against Sasha Banks at WrestleMania. These are girls who have never faced Sasha Banks yet, I believe. Okay. Uh, probably one might be, um, yeah, they never faced Sasha Banks. So here you go. Okay. Number one, Michelle McCool. Number two, AJ Lee. Number three, Gail Kim. Number four, Victoria. Number five, Molly Holly. And number six, Amber Moon. So okay. just as we did before, nice. I'll let you start and I'll go after you. Uh, first one is Victoria. Damn, you took mine. Okay, <laughs> I will go with uh, Molly Holly. Cool. I will go McCool. Okay. And I will go with uh, Gil Kim. So we're down to either AJ Lee or Amber Moon. Oh, Amber Moon. Oh, my gosh. Either one? Woo! Yeah. I would have... that match. I know. I would... You know what? Yeah, I would have to go with AJ Lee. I would have to see... I would like to have seen Ember Moon versus Sasha Banks. Those two would probably would have definitely put on... My perspective, they would put on a better show than Brianna... Uh, Bri, uh, Brianna Bianca. Ba- Belair. Bianca. Bianca Belair. Um, and Sasha Banks at WrestleMania. I think those two would have had a better match with each other. So, no, I agree. I think I would have, between, like, I, uh, that match could have gone either way for me, too. Yeah. I could have gone with uh, either, you know, either I know one. AJ Lee. She's uh, actually undefeated at WrestleMania. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ember Moon. And uh, Ember Moon, imagine her entrance at WrestleMania, what she would have, like, what she would have looked like against Sasha Banks. Right. So I think Ember Moon against Sasha would have been a clear, you know, four to five star match. I agree. And I think like you said, with the whole what she would have looked like, I think she's she would have definitely worked on her entrance. You know what I mean? Like she would have had to tweak mm-hmm. it out with a different with the lighting, with the you know, the pre- presentation. I feel like she would have had a better 
you know, wanting to make a better impact on the entrance. So I feel like that would have been even cooler. You know what I mean? And Just with all around better. If I was there to eat, I would have focused on Ember Moon like they did with Bray Wyatt, where Bray Wyatt at certain uh, manias, he always had like a pretty cool entrance, like Triple H did, you know? Right. I would have developed Ember Moon to be this girl who every mania would have an epic uh, style of entrance to come into. Definitely, because she has that look. She has that greatness yeah. in there. Yeah, agreed. All right, cool. so let's continue the show. Those are the only two I had in mind. Sounds uh, don't good. worry, we're not. Uh, nope. Next time, you know, when we get to Reject Mania, well, I have an idea for Undertaker, so you'll see. You'll like. <laughs> nice. Okay. So, move, keep it along, you guys, real quick, since we've got a short period of time right now. Um, you know, we found out that there is a lot of rumors heading the, heading the limelight, you guys. It it could be Shane McMahon heading, heading to AEW and the swap with Cody Rhodes heading to back to WWE. We do know for a fact Cody Rhodes is leaving, you know, AEW. We do know for a fact that Shane McMahon let go, got let go or fired or whatever case to be or quit or whatever from WWE. Now, the question is, uh, oh, man, RJ, and this is a one man question here right here is are would it be an exchange or would it be more or less of them doing their own things afterwards? In this case scenario, are they on to a bigger, better thing at this point right now? Go ahead. I think what do you Shane. Think? Uh, for me, Shane McMahon going to AEW is more like Shane getting uh, pissed off that his own dad would fire him because they blame him for what happened at the Rumble. And mm-hmm. Shane was just, honestly, he was just trying to build up. He, he Okay, yeah, he dipped himself in the Final Four, which was dumb. You know, he should have cut himself like before that got eliminated. Uh, I think if he would have played it smart, he would have had Austin Theory eliminate him at the Rumble, which would have caused uh, him and Theory to had this match that they were trying to build between them two where Shane was being jealous of Austin Theory's uh, attention from Vince McMahon, you know? Okay. Um, that would have been a good angle. And apparently, yes. like, they messed up a lot and they, the blame falls on Shane when even McMahon himself, like, Vince was overlooking the pay-per-view. So, you know, Vince has a lot to do with it, but Vince never takes the blame. Right. So, I think Shane might go to AEW. If he does, it's just to, like, smack his own dad and say, look what happened here. You know, I, you fired me. Now I'm about to take you out of business. Now, what is it? Now, go and chime in on that particular question. Do you think the rumors are true in the sense of them, him probably creating WCW again and buying no. it from Vince? I looked at, I looked around and it said kayfabe. So I guess that's all Got fake, it. you know. That's all fake. The, yeah. But okay. it doesn't mean that he wouldn't go to a different company and buy it or become partners with the company. He does right. have uh, the money to do so. I think, And the other thing is, too, he does have the name. McMahon, in fact, that even at that, it, he doesn't necessarily have to carry on the family name itself. Shane McMahon carries some weight. You know what I mean? As a performer and as a wrestler as in the industry. So for that, and then for somebody who want, who has the money, you know, billionaire, and they want to put dish it out, I would say go for it. Partner up with him and make, make something. You know what I mean? He has some decent ideas. But again, if you put a good team around him in the sense of direction, then it goes from there. He, I, you know, I think my other, my thing with Shane, he did. It's like we don't know, we don't really necessarily know too much of his history. Okay, I think we don't know for a fact if he did create these ideas in Attitude Era when he was wrestling with, with uh, against everybody, or even at that ruthless aggression when he came about and started going after Kurt Angle and all this kind of stuff. Like, was it really him and his ideas on certain things? Of wanting to do so, or was it, you know, was it somebody saying, you know, let's put him in there? He's he's pretty decent just to throw around and be a a, a throw rag, you know what I mean? Um, so it's questionable. It's very questionable. But why not? Shaman Man carries some weight. Billionaire got money. Go for it. You know, be nice. Yeah. But what do you think about the the Cody Rhodes? What do you think about that there? His is more, dude. I like the sad part is when he left AJ, he talked about how. It was- he left because he had passion for wrestling and all that. Now he leaves AEW because he's like, the money's not there. I'm like, well, what happened with you leaving WWE because of passion and not money? Well, of right. course, money talks. 
you know, no matter what. I mean, when Cody left to AEW, he didn't leave and just go into wrestling. He had an executive role in the company. Right. So, I mean, all this time, he's just been a bs from the beginning all the way to the end. And I don't blame him, you know. Uh, nowadays, we realize money is necessary for everybody. Shane, uh, Cody has a kid now and everything, so right. he's going to go where it's right for him and his family. And I would do the same thing if I had a kid and a wife. You would do it. You got like, Facts. you know, 17 kids in your area. So, you Facts. know, it's... it's uh, <laughs> All my baby so mamas do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you put yourself in his shoes, you are going to go where the money's right and the contract's right. Apparently, if, if he goes to WWE, they might, from what I was reading, all those like gossip and rumors and anything, is that he's getting a contract where he gets to do as he wants in the company. Creative control. Yeah, he's getting creative control. So I, at least that's better than what he had before. True. Very true. I think I think in this case scenario, that's a very good contract. Now, I don't know. See, here's my thing, though, with that, uh, Old Man RJ, is I don't know if Vince is really giving out contracts like TNT did. All right, back in the day with WCW, where they gave them full bone, uh, you know, immunity if they wanted to. In this case scenario, where it happened with you know Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan, you know Sting and Goldberg and all the other the big namers guys. You know what I mean? Their contracts. I don't know if that's something he's dishing out, but I do. I can definitely see that in the contract itself. It'd be a more perk in there for Cody to one receive more money, definitely. Two, more of a, a more of a. Not say control of what he could do, but in more sense of an input on the direction on the storyline itself. You know what I mean? Like inputs. We can take your input, but as far as at the end of the day, will it be the decision? We don't know, but we can accept it. And you do get maybe three or four naysays or whatever case may be. You know what I mean? Like, no, nah, I don't want to do that storyline. No, nah, I don't want to do that. You get three or four of that. And, you know, if that's not a particular contract of the, the storyline we want to push you in or whatever, then guess what? You, va- you know, you, you know, you uh, violated the contract. Now we get to, you know, fire you, whatever the case would be. So I think that's something where that's something he'll probably be setting up with. But I do believe, yes, it's a better money situation at this time right now. Your idea is correct with the kids. I think that's a big factor in his ideal at this point right now. What changed his mind from six years ago to now? So, all the props to him at this point right now. I think me and you have enjoyed his career in AEW. He's made a big name for himself. He's carried the Rhodes, uh, you know, name very good. I think uh, he's ready for it. I think he's old enough now, wise enough now to get in the ring and mesh with the best. You know, mesh with a Seth Rollins would be very interesting. Mesh with uh, Finn Balor, which would be even cooler. Uh, mesh with who else? AJ Styles. You know what I mean? Talking about their days, you know, probably in Ring of Honor and what they've, you know, come across paths with each other. Um, what others? Other Shin, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. You know, SG3's favorite guy. Uh, who else he can chime in with? You know, even tag partners at this point right now. We don't know. Uh, Miz, the, yeah. Mysterio. Yeah. The names you are got like possibly the endless. Uh, it, you just gotta it's build just it. Gotta be right place. Exactly, you're correct. You gotta build it and put it at the right place. So I don't know. What do you think? What What else do you think? You could, what would you rather see from him going forward? Well, one, of course, I like for him to stick with the American Nightmare uh, personality, and since he, uh, I think he bought the rights to it himself, and the Rose name, I think he already he already has the rights to that too. So he doesn't have to worry about losing that anymore. That's one uh, plus for him, you know. Another right. plus is, of course, uh, a lot of his dad's uh, creations are in WWE, like a Great American Back. Bash, Bash at the Beach. Um, right. I forgot what else, but you know, Dusty Rhodes created a lot of matches on that on that card. Heck, yep. uh, War Games I think was created by Dusty Rhodes. So Plus, I think so too. You're right. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, I think it was created by him. So, if it was, imagine Cody might go to NXT and perform there. Yeah, right. he might even take Triple H's role in NXT and become the new uh, executive person of NXT. If Jericho were to ever come back to WWE, I think he would be best to be put in that predicament. I would rather have Jericho be in there. I feel more comfortable with that setting. But 
you know, why not? You know, he's he could teach the young guys what he learned when he was going through the training process and the same thing going forward. You know, this is what we did at the ADW that was successful for us, and I think this is something you could do from there. The only issue with that would be is, though, old man OJ is Vince. Knowing his ego, knowing who he is, I could tell you right now, if he keeps getting a lot of word of what they do somewhere else and bring it here and say, this is not what we do as WWE, that's going to become a problem. Now, I don't know. I can't, you know, chime in on that. But, you know, and me and you can definitely agree that if Vince sees something that's not going his way, that he visioned it, he's going to cut ties and, you know, demolish it as much as possible, make it look stupid, cut the rope, and point the finger back at you and, you know, put you out there to fucking hang and dry. Sorry, sorry, excuse my language. But, you know, you know, hang out and dry like that. And I, you could definitely agree with me on that one. I agree. I agree. He, uh, like, I've seen a lot of things that happen and he puts the blame on other people like Jim Ross. You know, he's, right. he's fired Jim Ross multiple times because of things that he himself did and he, or <laughs> things that were out of Jim Ross's hand, like Ric Flair being drunk at a event and Jim Ross was there and it's like, you know, you're supposed to keep an eye on Flair and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you can't keep an eye on Flair no matter what. <laughs> Nobody can. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. You can't so, keep an eye on a wrestler like that. No, so it's like, you know, you can't blame somebody for for being who he is. It's like you punish Jim Ross, but you didn't punish Flair for being Flair. Right. So that's that's uh how I see it is. This man really, you know, he's he's always been this random weird uh guy even when he was young. So even when getting older He's just his, yeah. His mind is just not as good as it was back in the day, and I think <laughs> either his mind is not as good as it was back in the day, or he's trying to do as I said before. He's trying to lower the value of the company, yeah. and he's trying to find who the next big buyer is to sell it. Because if you look at it, he cut ties with Triple H in a way, which um, means they cut ties with Stephanie. That's true. Like I haven't even heard Stephanie in a long time. I haven't heard. You know, I, that's the crazy thing, uh, Old Man OJ, is I haven't seen her seen her face at all in anything. So I, have, that does, you know, throw a red flag. I think that there's something going on with the McMahon family behind the scenes that it just didn't, you know, it's just not going well back there. And something's changing. I think, yes, maybe Triple H is probably, you know, at this point right now, is having truly, you know, ish, health issues, which we all wish him well if that's true. But to be honest, I, I can, at this point right now, with all things transpiring, I can clearly see Triple H at this point right now saying, you know what? And here's, you know, excuse my language, everybody. This is parental advisory right here. Like I said at the beginning of the show, please be careful, kids. Watch out. But parents, you know, tune in. But I, if I'm Triple H, and now all these changes are coming in and you're trying to point the finger at me because my my thing, my scripts are better than your your stuff, your crap. Don't sit there and sit do this like that. You know, screw you because I've done everything. I've been here, bled, I sweat tears for you, your company, this company that I love, this this industry that I've bled for, this you know, the people that I've created, these wrestlers that I've molded for you to sit there and go out and be phenomenal performers, be a million dollar buck type of wrestler. And this is what you've done to them. Like, screw you, dude. Like, I'm done with this shit. I'm moving on. I'm, I'm freaking tired of this crap. My, my fucking family has been dealing with this. And you're lucky you're my wife's husband, I my mean, wife's father, or else I'll sit there and kick your ass. But at this point right now, boss or dad, I'm out. Peace out. I'm done. This shit's stupid. You're going to lose. Your money's going to go down the crapper. And this is all because of you want to be this old behemoth of an idiot. And we go from there. I just feel that's what happened. And more and more, we are getting a lot of, of you know evidence that that really did happen. You know, with the whole name change of NXT, the wrestlers that he hired and brought in are now gone, fired, that they weren't the we could tell the ones that weren't, you know, Vince guys. They were Triple H guys. You know what I mean? Like you could see that because it, it just it sucks. It sucks to those guys that were involved with what Triple H build up and now see what's happening with them. It sucks. It really does. And I think that's the case. It does. 
But think of one thing, though. All those guys are in another company, and a lot of people have said it. it's like, okay, you ever see, like, those cartoons or those movies where, like, that kid, he gets locked inside his home for behaving bad, and then he looks outside, and all his, like, friends are having the best time of their lives, and this kid is trapped in there, like, bored and sad because he can't go out there and play with them? Right. That's what WWE looks like right now. Yep. All their friends are in AEW and TNA and Ring of Honor is going to be out uh, for the moment. But, you know, you got all your friends in uh, TNA and in Ring of Honor. And I think a new company is building up and raising up. All your mm-hmm. friends are having the time of their lives while you're over there looking at them like, damn, I wish I was there. You know? Yep. And no matter how much money you make, no matter how much they're going to pay you, it doesn't, you know... Yes, you are going to do it because the money's there. Yes, you're going to be a WWE guy. That's cool. But deep down in your mind, deep down in your heart, you look at these shows and these people who are having the time of their life, and you think of it over and over again, what it would have been like if you were there with them. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's what happened here. You know, Vince, yeah, you got rid of a lot of it, Triple H's people, and yep. you cut ties with your daughter and your son. People yep. who should have inherited your company or bought the company like you did with your own father, where you your dad lowered the value of his company and sold it to you. Yep. And then you created this big behemoth, you know? Uh, now your company goes down. Yeah. Yeah, no, go ahead. Continue. So now your company is lowering its price down, but it's like you're not selling it to Shane. You're not something it's to stuff me unless that's the ideal of firing your kids is I'm gonna fire you guys, but you're not gonna come buy with the company for me now. That Just makes sense. Inheriting it. That's true. I mean, we we don't know the ins and outs of business and legal issues. If that's the case, you know, maybe maybe that is the situation that's happening behind the scenes where. You know, we have to make it look like we're, you know, we got to let you go and we're having all these issues. And the reason why is because at least I'm going to definitely leave my company that we built within the family name. My father did that with me. He, you know, he trusted in me to make this business what it is. I changed the game of wrestling forever in this world that it leaves an input. My name for will ever be sit there, remembered and put there in, 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 in the world. You know what I mean? Like his name will go on and on for all the history. And at this point right now for him is like now the history is going to be switching over to you guys. You guys, all three can definitely make this happen. If you guys get me out of the picture, this this is going to catapult and go you know, to, to the great ends. And I think that. I definitely do believe that it should have been, it should be given to them to them three and really focus on that. Give back, give NXT to Triple H, give freaking SmackDown to Steph, give what's it called? Freaking shame man on raw, whatever, vice versa, switch them around or whatnot. And that way, you know, here's your guys like back in the day, here's your show. Here's your show. Here's my show. Let's make this company. Awesome. Let's cross brands with each other back and forth. Let's get this crack a lacking. You know what I mean? Like that's phenomenal. They were on the roll. 205 live. UK NXT, all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, they were on a roll. But then, you know, we get Vince. We get Vince. Ah, skirt! Uh, Hang on. That's Hang why, on, guys. Yeah, that's why I'm like, dude, uh, to me, it feels weird. Like, when you're on a roll, and it's, uh, it's your company is on a roll, why lower the value, value of it? You know, why start dropping it? And I started thinking, well, of course, uh, there's one reason why you want to do exactly what your dad did to you, and that's sell the company to your kids. Yeah. But you can't sell it if it's too high expense for them to buy. True. And you can't sell it to Stephanie because you don't want the name of Levisky to be the main ownership. Right. So you're gonna sell it to Shane, but you can't sell it to Shane because Daddy's little prince is gonna be like, "Why are you pushing me to the side?" You know. Right. So I think what Vince wants is co-ownership between both of them. I think that's what he's waiting for is I'm going to sell it to Shane, make Shane the high majority owner. But I'm going to also give Stephanie a good say in the company itself. Yeah, I can see that. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what goes on, big man. All right, Mr. Old say, Man RJ. Uh, before we, I was going to say, 
for now on, if you want to, just to keep it more simple between all of us, instead of calling me old man RJ all the time, you could just call me RJ. Son of a gun. Here we go. I got to tell SC3 this now because he's going to be like, what? Another name? Another no, no, change? No. I'm still old man RJ. I'm just saying like to keep it more like simple, you know? <laughs> I'm still okay. old man RJ, but I feel okay. like it's a struggle for you to come up with who the hell, you know, who is he? <laughs> if we do the show for that one, my social personality, my social media personality will be old man RJ. On the show, after you introduce me as Old Man RJ, we could go with RJ the whole show. That way, I eat it simple. All right, sounds good to me, man. All right, not, I haven't changed. Uh, I haven't changed my name to Wise Man RJ yet. That's coming up. <laughs> yeah, probably not ever. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mister <laughs> RJ, this is a good show. I appreciate you guys for joining us at Rejects in the Booth Wrestling Edition Number Four. If I'm not mistaken, we yeah. got it all right. Very good. Uh, otherwise, tune in next time. We're going to chime in a little bit more. Hopefully, we'll find out what, what happens with Cody Rhodes and Shaman Man very in the near future so we can discuss a little bit more about it. But this was awesome. Um, old Man RJ, I'll leave it to you. Say goodbye to the fans, man. Say goodbye to the peeps. All right, Rejects. As always, thank you for uh, sitting here listening to me rant and listening to Tony talk about whatever Tony was talking about. I lost track of him. But sure. um, thank you for being on the show with us. I uh, thank y'all for listening to us as always. Thank you for following us. Following us, I can't pronounce my words right now. Following us on all social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, um, Twist and Shout, Facebook, you know, all that good stuff. TikTok, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all that good stuff. Thank y'all for being there with us. And I uh, hope y'all, hope a lot. Hopefully, y'all have a great time. Y'all have a lovely day, okay? Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. Y'all take it easy. Have a good one. All right. Hold up.